Welcome to this week's episode of You Can't Handle the Emet podcast. The purpose behind the podcast is to find ordinary individuals who have survived extraordinary circumstances and still manage to build lives of quality while just surviving at some stages of their life. It's about ordinary people like you and I doing amazing things to build a life that they deserve. This week's guest is an incredible young woman. I've known Helen for many years and have seen her grow and develop as a person over the years. Sure, tough this one. It's difficult making these videos about someone that you care about and about someone who you know has experienced a tremendous amount of pain and suffering and difficulty in their lives. Helen has had a very challenging journey in her life. She talks about starting out as a young gymnast and martial artist and having a disease take that all away from her and nearly cost her her life on several occasions about having the courage to go to the beach in the bikini carrying a colostomy bag or wearing a colostomy bag and just having the courage to be yourself if you would like to develop the mental toughness and the courage and the strength through hearing the experiences of others who have done the same ordinary people then this episode is for you it's tough, Helen bears a lot, and it gets quite emotional. Enjoy the show. Today's show is proudly brought to you by Emmet Gyms. Yep, that's me. We're sponsoring our own show. So if you would like to log on to our website, www.emmetgyms.com, and use the coupon code YCHTE, the abbreviation of You Can't Handle the Emmet, 0520. To get 10% off any training for this month, uh, for the month of June rather. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we felt we'd give you guys a little bit of a discount. And that's for some of the best training that you're going to find online, personally, with a coach, not in group classes. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the show. There we go. So we are recording now. And um, you were saying you were going to picture me in a Speedo to help relax you for this podcast you've seen me in a speedo yeah sorry no no speedo no you've seen me in 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 baggies on the beach in buckwell and cargoes yes i have yeah absolutely and And full shirts on the beach (laughs) well it was a factor 40 sunblock so that was so cool that was amazing yeah (laughs) so cool (laughs) so helen welcome to the you. you cannot handle the Emet podcast. <laughs> How cool is that for a name? So come on, your first podcast, and I got you. Woohoo! I'm going to make you famous. <laughs> Absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, and because you are famous, and um, you know, if if I look at you in the amazing circle that you have around you, people talk about not. You know, it's not the quantity of your friends that you have in your life. It's the quality. But you have both. And I think that's testament mm. to, to who you are. And you've been on some... good people. Absolutely. You know, and you've been some, on some incredibly... Sure. An incredible journey. And you've had some major challenges in your life. And as we were chatting just before we started recording, the point of the podcast today why we've started this podcast is to talk to everyday people that have survived extraordinary events in their life and continue to do so and it's not about learning to move from surviving to thriving it's about building a thriving life while you're surviving even when you are not i mean you are the epitome of that i've seen that within you you know, you're someone, and I'm not, again, blowing smoke up, up your bottom, but um, <laughs> you're an incredible person inside and out. So, you know, the point here is this really is the, the, the podcast is about conversation. 
-hmm. it's not about me rambling on. So if you'd just like to share with our listeners or viewers when it's on YouTube, just a little bit about yourself and your mm -hmm. amazing story, because you are amazing. Oh, Nick. Um, you this is what we call Nick. dropping in the deep end. <laughs> no, thanks. Are you going to edit me like puffing up my hair? <laughs> it's fine, we can. <laughs> okay. Um, my life. Oof. So I think maybe you want to possibly. Oh, I don't know. Um, so toughness. I, I mean, you're talking about toughness. And I suppose it started when I was a gymnast and, you know, they used to train you really, really, really hard and you, you know, pain wasn't a thing and you just pushed through it and, you know, you coach so much that you just kind of push through it. Um, and then, yeah, it's, I did martial arts as well. And uh, I was going to say, really, what, what people respect their coach and do what they say? Wow. Well, I, I've, I've, I've grown since <laughs> Okay. I've grown since then, Nick. I don't listen to everything my coach says and I argue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any, absolutely. So just to let people know, Helen has been training with us for a while and I've known Helen for many, many years. Um, so I've got to watch your journey and your struggle. I mean, what you've been through, if we can talk about it, just health wise, you know, and you so talk about, wise, mm. you, so, you, uh, oops, sorry, go on, go on. <laughs> you go, go first. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to be polite. Oh no, don't be. Um, so I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 17, um, in the middle of matric exams and I was in hospital. I came in, well, what I thought, was a very strong person. Um, I was an athlete. And at the end of it, I couldn't put my jeans on. I was so weak. Um, this was after, I think, a week or two in hospital. And they started my roller coaster with um, Crohn's disease and autoimmune. Um, it was cack. <laughs> Sorry. Inside joke. <laughs> it was cack. Um, yeah, and you know, there, there were a few years that I had a reprieve, but my whole adult life, I've only known, I'm, I've only known pain and um, an illness. Um, these past two years, say, have been almost good. And then I had about four years when I was about 33 to 37, I think, um, that I was okay. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a roller coaster. I think just if you could share with the listeners sort of what is Crohn's and autoimmune, just a, a very simple explanation. So Crohn's disease specifically is when the body attacks the colon. So the immune system, the fighting cells don't switch off and they continue to have an immune response or inflammatory, inflammatory response. For me specifically, it's in, in the colon and actually in the kidneys. I've got a um, kidney um, disease as well. Um, so it's when the immune system doesn't stop fighting. I think firstly, it's uh, sure to speak publicly about your health. People are very private with your health. So I just wanted to say thank you for having the courage to come on here and talk about it. Because there are people that are sitting out there with the same medical conditions that are terrified to let the world know because they're afraid of being judged. And we were speaking a little bit earlier about sort of judgment and body image. And, you know, yeah. I've seen you fighting for your life and I've seen you on a beach in Thailand, yeah. you know, 
And those are two very different images that the world sees. And, you know, we are, we live in a physical world, which is something that we are working very hard to change. I mean, you know, that's our belief system at our gym. It's about what your body can do. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you would just sort of talk about your experiences with that. Um, I think it's and all how, experience. How, yeah. and for me, mm. Mm. For I was going to say, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this happens all the time when we talk. Know. You know, yeah. I was just thinking like, you know, th- this is, it's not an, it's not a rare disorder. It's not a rare disease. Crohn's and autoimmune and our lifestyle seems to be accelerating the number of people that have that. Now, if if you'll excuse me, physically, you are a very beautiful woman. Yeah, come on, man. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just being honest here. The show is called Emmet. That's right, man. (laughs) (laughs) But you, you know, you've, you've had to, you've lived two very different worlds. Yeah. Um, so, I have worked on my shame, um, shame for my body, what it's become. I've, be, I've had to deep dive into that. It's like the world has slapped me into, into touch, you know. You either accept yourself or you're going down. Um, so I don't hold shame for what I've got, and I don't think anyone should hold shame for the the what the world what the universe has dealt them it's your correction in life it's your tikkun um to get through it get over it and find the lesson within it um the fact that i've got crohn's you know it's it's almost more palatable than being depressed or being bipolar or something you know because yeah it's a more palatable version of that and more acceptable you know a shame she's got Crohn's um yeah I think it's a standard that people shouldn't be held to it's just a thing it's a thing that someone has to deal with one person will have depression, another one will have Crohn's. Someone will have a good life. It's just what you've dealt and you kind of live through it. How was it for you being sort of the experience of, I mean, I've been to, you know, I, I don't want to share your private secret beach in Cape Town because we don't want visitors. I'm, okay, uh, moving along. A lovely private secret beach in Cape Town. And even when you were just recovering, you know, you were on the beach in a bikini and you were rocking it and you were lying there in the sun and just grateful for where you were. How long did that journey take? What were the lessons that that you got? What was the reason? You need to take a step back because it wasn't just being in a bikini on the beach. No, no, (laughs) it wasn't being just in a bikini on, on the beach. My Crohn's had gotten so bad that um, I had to have my colon out. I was pumped full of cortisone. My colon was rotting within me. And me, Helen, this is it. I, I kind of had known for years that it could be a possibility. But my doctor said, Helen, there's nothing we can do. You have to have your colon out. And what that means is you have to have an ostomy bag. And I mean, I don't think I'd eaten for a week. I was in such agony. I think water was even painful for me at that stage. Couldn't find a, a vein. Um, I was so full of cortisone. Pethidine wasn't touching sides. I was an absolute mess and so i got moved to donny gordon um i got paired up with a brilliant um and i mean i i i'm grateful for my medical team 
because they're just amazing. So um, if there's anyone you want to name while well, you're on, you can with pleasure. Well, Herbie Schneider and Dean Lutron and I mean, those are t the two guys. Um, awesome. And yeah, and everyone who was there and supported me and got through this. Um, and I mean, the, you kind of, you know, you're too sick to understand kind of what's happening because you kind of want to save your life. Um, and, you know, the surgery was supposed to be, I think, two hours and it turned out to be six hours. Apparently, as they pulled the colon out, it just disintegrated. Um, and so literally, it was just in time. It was... So, you don't understand the implications. You're not ready for it because it was basically an emergency surgery. And it wasn't like I went into surgery and came out with an ostomy bag. It was I went into surgery and that this was the outcome but the implications of it took a while to settle in um so to take a step back um for the years prior to the surgery i had also had a condition called angioedema and my face used to swell and become disproportionate um my lips would become this big my eyes used to swell shut when I went into emergencies, people thought I'd been beaten up um, severely. And so then was the time that I was forced to accept my being as it was because I had to go out into the world and I was deformed and my face was, um, it, I, I was not pretty. You know, it it was not a pretty thing at all to see. Like, like, I mean, I'll send you photos. Maybe you want to post them in between. Um, it was hectic. So then I I started. Having to accept myself. As I was, and I can tell you. That angioedema was hell because it was on the outside. Crohn's disease is a disease that's invisible, but angioedema was in your face. You, you can't not see it. Um, and yeah, that, that was more of a struggle to accept because I had to go into the world looking like a monster. And how, do you, how do you start that process of accepting what you look like? Sure, it's not easy. That is not easy. You, you have to dig deep. It's, you have to see yourself as so much more than your outward face on the world. You have to see yourself as hole on the inside. Um, that's, that is tough when, when you face the world and you have to check your ego at the door. Um, and when you checking your ego at the door, so I've done a bit of Kabbalah in my life and one of the exercises a certain Kabbalah sect teaches is to squash the ego. And I took this as a learning experience to squash my ego. You know, there's ego, which is healthy, but there's the ego that is unhealthy. And learning to squash, squash it and be humble um, and not have that outward world dictate how you see yourself is, it's actually gold gold um it frees you up on so many different levels and of course i i do care what people think to a point probably not as much 
as most people. You know, I really don't give a hoot. <laughs> it's not the word I'd use, but <laughs> don't give a hoot about... You don't um, want us to hit that explicit button. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really give a hoot. That much of a hoot, rather, about people's perception of me. And so when I got into the beach um, after my operation, where I've now got, I'm in a bikini, um, my wounds haven't healed um, and they're still oozing. And I am on the beach in a bikini with my bag out. And yeah. It wasn't so hard for me because I'd already had the basis. Um, and I admire so many people who from nothing get the strength, the inner strength just to, I mean, there are so many women who have, and men who have got the bags out and they're running and they're active and they're doing sport and um, beautiful, gorgeous, sexy girls with the bags out and they all are inspiration and it doesn't matter what your your thing is you need to find your perfection within and see your perfection without see it as a journey um yeah there are so many people who are not the, the traditional version of whole. Um, there's so many people who have got their things. I mean, even a self-image thing, you know, someone who hasn't maybe gone through what I've gone and calls me brave, but their thing is the, I don't know, fat thighs or big ankles or, um, you know, they've got this little thing, this, this, this um, version of their imperfection that no one actually really sees, but it's something the, the, you know, the nose that isn't like 100% straight or, you know, you know, you get a wrinkle or two. Their version of the imperfection, the higher level that society, um, the standard of beauty that society gives us, is rubbish. Um, it's, so I'm, I mean, I've gone on a tangent, but yeah, it's not brave to have your bag out. It's, it, these things need to be normalized. Maybe I need to say this. These imperfections that people are so critical about need to be normalized. It's not something abnormal. It's not something that needs to be looked at sideways. Um, so now I've got Crohn's on the outside. So you can see that I've got something wrong with my digestive system because I've now I've got a bag it's on the outside. Um, so yeah, it's in your face and you need to deal with it. And so I've had to deal with it. Crohn's you can hide and the pain of Crohn's you can hide. Um, and as a Crohn's patient and autoimmune, I think a lot of people who will watch this or related, you hide it so well. You hide the, the, the illness so well. Um, nobody sees it. You know, you put on your makeup, you get dressed, and for that hour or two hours that you're out there in society, you're like, like 100%. You come home and you crash for two days. People don't see that part. So, Why no, do you feel as a society we need to hide? To put on our makeup, to put on a happy face? an expectation it's the people's value of themselves i mean i don't say be miserable um i think is it easier yeah. to go out in pain showing that you're in pain or is it harder so, so that's the thing um being in pain people don't like being around people in pain so this is why you know for social acceptance and that kind of thing you don't we can show you who the real people in your life are. You know, yes and no. 
Yes and no. Um, I don't. Uh, it's a hard one. Um, so I was I was asking it as a question. Wait. So the so wait. The ideal answer <clears throat> is you should be yourself, and people should accept you for who you are. And that's true to an extent, but no, it doesn't work like that. So I think, because yeah, we should be ourselves, example. but people will accept us based on their filters and their experiences. You see, I disagree with that. Um, if I'm moaning all the time, and if I'm miserable all the time, I'm not engaging on my highest frequency. Sure, everyone's got problems um, and everyone's got things and you do share that with your friends. But if you... Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. But if you're dragging the energy down all the time, people don't want to be around that. And I, I've had friends that have stuck by me and I've got other friends that have gone and that's okay. It's what they can deal with, with what that person can deal with. Um, I, I try not to judge people um, by their responses because it's what's within their own framework and it's what a person can handle or not handle it. And it's not about me. So there's the thing, it's not about me, it's about them. Um, and their response to me, which is none of my business. I think that's the, what I was saying was people's responses to us are based on their experiences, their world, their filters. I think though, if you're in pain and you're going out, you're not always going to be down and miserable. And But sometimes it's good just to go, I'm not winning today. And have yeah, people of course. accept you for then that. Then you say you're not winning. But if mm. you're always in, like, down in the dumps and it's hard for people to handle as well because they've got their own shit. Absolutely. And I'm lucky, I'm lucky enough to have friends that we've, we open enough with each other. We can say this is what's happening in my life. That's cuck. And then... It's a discussion, but it's it's not the entirety of the discussion or the friendship. There are other elements to it, and I think maybe that is key. There's more than the misery. So the, 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 the real relationships has, are compound. Sorry, you go yeah. first. <laughs> so everything is more complex than one dimension, right? Absolutely. Um. But if you're one dimensional, people will, no matter if you're 100% positive all the time, it's one dimensional and people will also um, move aside. Wondering so, what medication you're on. Or what medication you need. <laughs> <laughs> How did your, your, your challenges earlier in life, also with your health, give you the strength to deal with the challenges as they increased? Um, I suppose it was a slow, slow build, you know, things started to escalate or devolve or whatever, however you want to term it. So it started with one thing, then it was another, then it was another, and it was another blow after another blow after another blow. And you had like, little breathers in between that you could pick yourself up and put yourself together again. Um, so I think possibly the ability to pick myself up and put myself together again and also reinvent myself or gave me the ability to deal with what I didn't know was coming. So I think sort of you, you feel you've been through, you survived this, you can now survive this, what's coming. 
So what you've been through in the past has made you strong enough to survive what came after that. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to just handle it, right? Um, so when do you reach that point? I mean, th that's the bottom line. That's honesty with yourself. It's like, well, I don't have an option. If I don't but what's your option? Go, what's your option? Yeah. Roll over, roll around, die. You know, you just don't. Well, I mean, some people do, and that's a choice. But I mean, in this life, I want to live. So the choice is life. And it's always life. And it's the want of a good life, a better life. So that always has been my focus make make it better for myself i mean you are so it's really building a life of quality while surviving life at the moment yeah uh, yeah yeah it is it's building a life of quality while surviving the moment and it's a it's a juggle between right now and building yourself up and looking to the future um and trying not to not to prejudge because of your past if if you were to talk to your 17 18 year old self and i suppose it's a bit of a cliche but you know, what would you say to yourself what advice would you give your younger self and the reason i'm asking this question is there are a lot of young people going through what you've been through mm. it, it must be terrifying because uh, you put these plans in your head and in your heart for how you want your life to be. And then you look at your friends that are doing this life and you're not able to do it. And there isn't a lot you can do about it to change the trajectory of your life, but you can just survive. What would you say to yourself or to anyone that's younger and listening? You can't gauge... Your, yourself or where you are in life with the, your friends or those around you or the social norms that uh, things that we've got. We've all got our own purpose and our own learning to go through. And your life may look completely different and take you to completely different places than your friends. And that's okay. Um, and there's no, no right or wrong or good and bad. It's just there is. Um, so yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge yourself, and I wouldn't judge your condition or station um, in relation to anyone else. Um, what I would say is. What standard you hold you to yourself for yourself? Um, are you are you doing the best that you can do on that particular day? And if you are at ten percent of what your friends can do, but you're doing ten percent at a hundred percent, then you're doing great, you know. And if you need to rest or to take time out or do the things that you need to do, then you just need to do them. And whatever you do is okay. Um, as long as you don't judge yourself too harshly or judge yourself according to others. Judge yourself on what you can do and what you, you feel, what f feels good for you, what's your best. If your best is lying on the couch the whole day, um, and not out of laziness because you have to rest, then you do that. And you look after yourself so you have strength. And if you need to go out and you have to put your, take your painkillers and pull yourself together and have five, two hours and come home, then you do that too. Rest. And sometimes some people have to rest for two hours. You know, for just to recover from those two hours of fun that you had. So I think it's, uh, whew, I mean, that, that's, 
I have to sit here for a moment just to take that in. And you know, I think what you're saying is sometimes you have to have the strength to be weak. You have to have the strength to be okay where, mm. to be, be where you're at in life. Yeah. And it's not weakness. No, I mean, weak, weakness. I mean, weakness in terms of physically, I can't get up. I'm going to lie down. Yeah, exactly. So you take it easy. You know, invisible diseases are the hardest to cope with because people go, but you don't look sick. Um, you look fine. And it's like, it's taken you every um, inch of energy that you've got and you've pulled it all together with everything you have just to be in that moment and people and it, it, the diseases there are many of them get downplayed all the time so you have to be okay with yourself if you were to and and this is something where I'm very grateful that you came on the show. And I'm I'm just I'm very, very grateful for your courage and the strength that it's taken for your sharing because I mean I've gotten to know you quite well over the years. And it is not an easy thing to talk about. And we spoke about you sharing you know, you bring incredible value to people who are listening. And to people so. you are, and to people that are walking this path. One of the things that I'm really happy and excited about is we spoke about sort of you looking at doing speaking about strength, about courage, about tenacity and surviving. And you're doing that. Mm. And you're a living example of it because when you show up to talk to a room full of people, the fact that you're standing up there and doing it is proof of how strong you are. You know, and that's why when I said, you know, having the strength to be weak, I wasn't referring to emotional weakness. I and mean, when I when I got clapped with uh, what we think was swine flu last year, not being able to get out of bed for ten days was terrifying, and then not being able to walk more than ten steps without having to sit down for twenty minutes. Is terrifying and when you live with that for years and it's present always that's a strength that I mean I, I, I don't know if I could have and just the value and the appreciation you have for the ability just to walk from your car to the shops you know, that we've spoken about yeah I think just something that I'd like to go down. If you were to speak to parents or to give a message to the parents of someone who their child has this condition or a similar condition, is there anything that you'd want to share? Sure. It's so tough because it depends on the parents. You kind of have to let your child support your child it's a balance because how do you not let your child be a victim of their their circumstance um and when when to push and when not to push because sometimes your child might be just too exhausted to move and you can't really see see it especially if you yeah and what I'd say to the parents is just support the child and let them carve their way into the world because they have to find their no matter what. They, they need we to just find broke up. They, they need to find. And we seem to have a, there's a bit of a link issue. They need to find their. The child with autoimmune needs to find their place in, in the world by themselves. Um, and uh, parents who care helps and yet sometimes parents yeah you can push a little bit but you need to understand you know 
getting to the couch and it's the most that they can do in the day. Um, if they got up and they got into the shower, sometimes they can do in the day. Yeah. And the child has to find the child has to find their way in the world. Um, yeah, the child has to find their way in the world. But yeah, you under, you need to also understand that sometimes if they get out of bed and have a shower, and that's what they're doing a day, that's all they're doing a day. And it's not being lazy. It's not being anything other than just that's all that was in the tank for that yeah. day. I want to go on to something serious, but a little bit lighter. Mm. Going back to the beach. Let's talk mm. about uh, body positivity, body image. Um, you know, it's one of my, the things that I was going to use the word pet peeve, but I think um, I'll use the word detest passionately okay. detest sure. yeah get, emo get emotional you know where you have um these marketing campaigns on social media or these adverts run or these groups where they talk about you know getting into summer body getting summer ready beach body you know do you have a dad bod you need to get on the beach that is stuff I hate with a passion because it's trying to build a business selling to people on their fears where you don't mm. have the, you, where you don't have the ca capacity or courage or I better <laughs> going to get myself into trouble here, you know, to, to market your product any other way than just to sell to them on their fears. Perhaps you're doing it. People do it because they have those same fears and they think they're helping. I do believe that, but I also believe that there are people out there just marketing. You have to look a certain way. And I think what I want to say to get your, your feelings on is, you know, do you have to look a certain way to enjoy the beach? And we know the answer to that. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, yeah, it's like just, you know, maybe just for some other pe you know, younger people out there or moms out there who are uncomfortable dads as well to take their clothes off and be in the sun oh that's you know it's a issue that you have to work through for yourself but i can tell you something for sure people don't give a shit about what you look like they really don't they don't they are too worried about themselves like am i fat they're not looking at you they're looking at themselves wondering what they're you look if you're looking at them worrying and worrying about what they look like so you can just let go um people open themselves to care too much about what you look like absolutely I mean, I mean if you're hunting and dating and stuff like that oh, maybe but um yeah you know you can keep a facade for so long and then the cracks show so just be yourself 100 percent, because that's all we can be talking about um Back to your, your speaking career, which I'm oh. looking forward to poking you with a <laughs> stick repeatedly until you get okay. on it. Because I think people have, we're about 40 minutes into the show. And mm -hmm. people that have come this far with us and are here because of the incredible value that you've given them. Oh, you too kind. No, I'm being serious. Thank you. This is what I do for a living. And the gym's called it, you know, it's a met truth. Who who would yeah yeah who who would you like to talk to? Who would I like to talk to? Um, um, I would like to talk to the people who've got obvious physical differences, differently abled people. Um, I'd like to speak to the women who've had mastectomies, um, amputees, um, you know, and yes, to the people who've got body image issues. Um, I'd love to teach them 
that they're okay just the way they are. And, and I think when you go through something that brings you to the point of being physically different, you have, you've got a certain toughness already that other people don't. So if someone's looking at the, the roles on this and I've got, I'm sitting here with a bag, I can tell you my eyes are going to hard roll back. Um, could could and, we have an example of that, please? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, if you're listening to the audio podcast of this, you have to go and check out the YouTube video. Go to about minute 40, 47. Yeah. Um, and you see, even as I say that, that's a be there. But anyway, we won't go there. Um, so as soon as you have gone through something that changes you physically, You've had to learn how to accept yourself. You've had a hard lesson in accepting yourself the way you are. Um, and that, I think you then miles ahead of most of the, of the people on the planet, especially what brands, I mean, brand activity has changed a lot and you are seeing more body positive images um, in the media. So I can say there, there's definitely been a shift. It's been a shift from the perfect body, the model body and stuff like that, to a more realistic view of bodies. Uh, and, and which we know <laughs> health-wise was not the ideal. The model body that no, was, not the ideal. was not healthy. And you'll look yeah. at a lot of... Um, advertising campaigns, especially for underwear, women in underwear, looking themselves and loving themselves. Um, so the world is shifting. So there is a shift already. Um, and to show what normal people look like, if you've had a baby, if you've had two babies, your body is not going to be the same. And you're too busy looking after your kids to to do all the things that you need to do. Um, well, some people, you know, and some people don't bounce back as well as other people bounce back. There, there can't be a judgment either. Um, so already ex accepting a mom bod after your two or three kids is you're way ahead of the pack. You know, eventually you just want to have fun with your kids on the beach. You don't give a hoot about the other people. It's of no consequence. What, what would you say? I mean, and, and that's the bottom line. It's like, don't waste time on the beach worrying about what you look like and not being present. Because every December holiday that goes by is your kids are older and that time will change. And eventually they won't want to be hanging around with you. But um, oh, yeah, so what would you say uh, to those people out there in the beauty, health, and fitness industry that are perpetuating this lie that you need to look a certain way to be on the beach or to take your clothes off? Just from what you've been through, what you've learned uh, about yourself. I'd say to them that the reality of life, of what people want is changing and they need to change the, change their attitudes to fall in line with the consensus of the people. The consensus of the people is that everyone's real and everybody, everybody physical being is accepted. Um, so, and you're going to see it more and more um, that normal bodies are going to be highlighted. And if a brand is not up to date with this um, paradigm, they're going to fall behind. And that's why you can see all of these beauty, beauty magazines are failing 
in this time of corona because people are being forced to understand what's real and to put their limited resources into into what's real i just wanted to go um, back to oh sorry so i kind of i kind of disagree with that <clears throat> being a media myself um it's a function of the economy especially here in south africa um it hasn't been good for at least two years now um so and you will have noticed that the covers of the consumer magazines have already changed and different body types have been applauded. So yeah, there has already, there was already a shift. I just, I'm quite happy about that. Do you mm -hmm. think the reason, the reasoning behind that is genuine or they're just doing it because they have to? Yeah, both. I think they um, they are doing it because they have to, but there, there is a shift in consciousness as a whole. Um, there is a shift in the world's consciousness and the, the, this time that we live in, there is a shift and it's um, shifting to a more, more authentic way of being, more whole and wholesome way of being. More real way of being. Yeah, I think it's every and I just want to applaud you on that because every time you go to the beach and you show up with your bag and your bikini, mm -hmm. you are putting that into the public consciousness. Any sure, time, um, anyone who does that, that doesn't, you know, that feels uncomfortable on the beach or wherever, taking off their clothing and exposing their body. They're putting that out into the public consciousness. And it's those small acts of courage that are changing the world and how we perceive it. So my little mission is to de-energize the stigma of these um, associations. So I will put it out, put it there in someone's face. I will say, here it is, deal with it, because it's not my problem if you don't like it. Awesome. Um, and but then I have to ask someone, you another question. Yeah. So every time someone. Yeah. So every time so so someone goes, oh, what what's wrong with that chick? You know, um, she's what is that on her stomach? So now they've seen it. Now they know that this is a possibility. So now there's a new possibility within the within the paradigm. So that small shift has happened. Awesome. Um, I was going to ask you, you know, then why you bully me when you're feeling strong and energized and then, you know, you were in Cape Town and then you make me climb Lion's Head. You know, you, oh, you, you, <laughs> just because you felt like climbing Lion's Head didn't mean I had to go with. <laughs> and then that brought out my fear of heights and you laughed at me because I was stuck on a ladder for 20 minutes anyway. And you did so well. And Thank you really you. did so well, and you conquered that fear. Yeah. I think but it was I, the highest point you got to, or had in, ever got in, to. Yeah, in seven years. Yeah, well, my knees are not well. After they moved the, they changed the path. That was yeah, as high as I had gone on. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah, <I'm gonna laughs> moving on. Let's talk about your fear of heights. <laughs> yeah. It's more of a fear of fall. It's not even a fear of falling. It's a fear of the sudden stop at the end of the fall. Now, my, my fear of heights goes back to witnessing my stepfather's suicide. Yeah, you told me about four that. Years that old. Was and, cl and clinging to the stairs. But yeah, that's, uh, that's time maybe for another show. Happy to talk about it. I've noticed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite sure you have, there's been a role reversal here and Helen's doing the interviewing. So yeah. <laughs> You've got a story to tell. Absolutely. We all do. And you know, that's what we're doing with the show because we all have something to share. And I've learned that over the last 13 years of working with addicts and training them that every time one of us shares, the rest of us benefit because we're all human. We're all the same. We all have that same feeling and pain and fear and anxiety that drives us. And we need to get that under control. And which, you know, you've done and I, I just, I applaud you and it's, you know, I don't want to push, uh, I could talk to you for hours, but I also want to be respectful to your energy 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm here. I know. Thank you. And uh, it's, it's awesome. And I'm just really, really grateful for that. So w- what's next for you? Mm-hmm. What's in the future? What, what are the plans? Um, Look at that smile. The There's a huge <laughs> smile. I'm going to drag you up to the top of Lion's Head, right? So just so you know. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling cool. over Table Mountain is coming. It needs to be conquered. Okay. Well, I'll make you a deal. Platterkloof. Okay. Platterkloof? Yeah, uh, the path. The Platterkloof. The... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the okay. easy one with the cable car, the escalator. Um, okay. Done. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you planning? Are there plans? Oh. You st- started a new business? I have. Um, mm-hmm. Just getting it stable in the time of Corona. Um, I am putting systems in place. Um, get it more quantifiable. I've taken over my father's business. We took over his father's business. Um, and So you're going to give it a lady's touch? I'm going to give it a lady's touch. Awesome. I think it's a, possibly a little bit harder than my father's touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. yeah, I'm a bit more demanding than he is. <laughs> awesome. Um, and what else? There, there, there's a lot. I have lots of plans for the future. Um, Tell us I about think, the gray hair. Oh, yes. I'm about... 20 centimeters out. And that's uh, so awesome. And yeah, I'm going out out to see um, what it looks like. And it looks pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, many reasons why. I, yeah, it's like one, the hassle, like getting the skunk streak, um, you know, a month in. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never heard that term before. Okay. Wow. Yeah, the sc- <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to laugh over here in the corner. You carry on, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And mm. you know, the ideals of society, you know, this, this needs to be normalized. You know, gray hair needs to be normalized. You know, the, the, the eternal youth, you kind of have to embrace where you are at and who you are. I mean, I would almost say embrace the crone going into crone. You know, so much, um, so much, um, what is the word? So much um, emphasis has been um, placed on the maiden and the maiden's beauty, but you don't see the wisdom and the beauty of, the crone and I mean people go oh crone is such an awful word but it brings such power so with growing my gray out um, I feel like I'm stepping into my power into everything that has made me me up till this point um never mind that I started going gray at 28 so I mean that's but for me it's a symbol of my power, um, my feminine beauty, um, stepping away from the, yeah, what's considered normal. And I hope with two weeks down, I mean, two months down lockdown that all the ladies who haven't gone to the hairdresser yet, because I know you're all going, um, you know, can just let it grow out. Sort of embrace, uh, show the world their inner wisdom and inner experience, because that's your your grey hair is your life. It's your CV. It's your it's what you've experienced and been through every day. It's who you are. And yeah, it's. And and it looks okay. awesome, by the way. I'm just going to tell you, 
So very, very cool. Yeah, so I what, just, yeah. uh, why can guys go gray gracefully? Um, <laughs> we can go gray gracefully, but we cannot go bald gracefully. May I remind <laughs> you of the comb over? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that was nasty. You just need to yep. shave it all off. That's it. Go bald. Shave, shave, shave the head. So what I want is to normalize all different things that are not considered normal but should be, like gray hair. Um, and it's, it just is. Some things just are, and you can just leave them be, you know? So it comes um, down to accepting who you are and loving who you are. Exactly. Because life has taught you what's real and what's not. And therefore you should just, you know, love and accept who you are because yeah, it just it, it's a lot less work. And as you know, we have finite energy every day. So if you have to put less energy into worrying about what color your hair is or whether you can go to a beach because you're worried about what people think, then you have less energy to to live and to function. What I do say, you know, just uh -oh. to con um, put it into context, mm. you, uh, you look after yourself, eat healthy, you know, you know, accepting yourself as you are doesn't mean that you need to eat carbs the whole time. So I'm not saying that, guys. I'm not saying that. You need to look after yourself. You need to look to bless your being with um, good things. And yes, if it makes you feel good to have your hair dyed, your Botox in, fillers in, you do that. You do that. It, do whatever is good for you. Um, yeah, but outside perceptions, people, if they care too much, uh, you know, move along. But I think it's do, <laughs> do what's really good for you. Do what's okay. really good for you, exactly. Yeah. Because and, what you think is you good for you, or sorry, I was saying mm. if you think what is good for you, or if you tell yourself this is good for you because you need to feel a certain way, then it's not good for you. You know, eating healthy is good for you, dyeing your hair because you're afraid that your husband would stop loving you if you went gray is not good for you. Precisely, yes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Um, do things that nourish you, that make you feel good. And when I say nourish, it's the positive aspect of looking after yourself. Um, so nourishment is healing, um, which also means heal your soul, heal your wounds. Um, so they don't fester. So if you're doing plastic surgery to please others and not yourself, you need to see, see what, it, what it is within you that drives you. Um, you know, hell, I'm definitely going to have plastic surgery when I, when I need it. Um, and I say yes to Botox. And <laughs> if you're going to do fillers, go. Please do fillers. Look beautiful. But know why you're doing it. 100%. That is a very, very powerful message. And um, I think for tonight, we're going to leave it there. I'm very grateful and uh, definitely like to have you back to talk a little bit more. And I have one or two evil ideas, evil plans that I will propose to you once we end the show. Absolutely. Um, just regarding your speaking career. So, uh, it's not often I'm lost for words, but I understood what I understand what it took for you to come on tonight and to talk to us. And I'm very grateful that you did. And I know people will get benefit out of this and they will understand that they're not alone in what they're going through. And they'll understand that they're not alone in their fears. And they'll understand that through what you shared, that they can grow and become more and become who they are. So I just wanted to say again, thank you and to salute you because it's been amazing to watch you over the last more than a decade. You know, so I'm very proud of you, my friend. I'm very oh. grateful. 
Thank you for pushing me because yeah, I needed to get over myself a little bit, slash that ego. Um, and yeah, um, you've been, you are, you've been a great inspiration. And I think to a lot of people as well. So, you know, you, you get the kudos as well, you know, for life and being Thank out you. there with your story and telling it and inspiring people to to say I've got gotten through what I have and um, you can too. No, oh, thank you, Helen. I appreciate that. And that's, uh, yeah. So guys, keep your eyes and ears open on, uh, on the YouTube channel and obviously on the podcast because we'll be getting Helen back. There are a few things I'd like to chat to her about. So just in closing again, I want to say thank you. And you look gorgeous as always, both inside and out. So mm -hmm. thank you, my friend.